All right, well, I just thought I'd share this uh, with anyone who's interested. About a month ago, um, through a mutual friend, I was introduced to Graham Gerard, who is uh, Graham and Judith Gerard, and Graham is the nephew of Cyril Gerard, the great Australian naturalist. And uh, they had Cyril's journals and photographs, a lot of which pertain to the Paradise Parrot. And they were looking for a permanent home. And I, um, as a ex-employee of the Queensland Museum, knew the museum quite well and thought, well, that's the obvious place for it. And so I got in touch with the museum and long story short, I've been entrusted with all the material to pass on to the museum. So uh, we've already given the camera and the kind of cloth that goes over the back of it, but the Gerard family said, I'm uh, welcome to hang on to the journals just for a little bit to have a read through them, uh, which I have been doing. And I, um, I'm just kind of cataloguing what's here to, um, to give to the museum as well. And then this stuff will be passed on to the museum very soon. But I just want to share uh, one of well, what, what there is here. Um, these are the journals. There's five journals and one exercise book. One journal is noted as missing. Uh, these are all uh, from, uh, we can see here actually 1910 to 1937. Um, most of them are in the early 1910s, 1920s. Um, but I was just reading here, and you can probably tell, oops, I'm just, let me just move these things. It's hard doing all of this one handed. Um, I just want to read out the first page, sorry, the, the page which deals with the first sighting Cyril had of the Paradise Parrot. Just read out his entry. And this is I don't know how to describe this stuff because these birds are most likely extinct. I think it's, if they were alive, it really would be a miracle. Um, and there's something I've been fascinated with my whole life and it's just really upsetting. But it's also just amazing that we had a man like this gentleman here who valued all of this stuff and his journals is just wall to wall descriptions of nature. It is just inspiring. And I want to see if we can organize to get a grant or something to transcribe all of this. It's all uh, handwritten like this. Some of it's even smaller than that, so it's very hard to um, to read some of it. So it needs someone to really sit down and be able to transcribe it. But I just want to read out this page here from December 11th, 1920, which is the first day that he saw the Paradise Parrots. So I'll just read out what he's got here. Today near Manor, I saw a pair of parrots which I believe to be Cephotus pulcheremus. A rough description I took on the spot was as follows. I'll just try and put that down, maybe if I hold it down there. Um, size somewhat smaller than Morton Bay Rosella. One bird brightly coloured, the other not. Former has head, neck and breast bluish green. Bill and face red, abdomen and under base tail red and reddish patch on upper wing coverts. Wing quills... Blackish. The male was of a general. Uh, the mate, sorry, the mate, because he's describing the female now. These um, these guys are sexually dimorphic. Uh, the mate was of a general brownish hue, lacking the bright colours. The reddish patch on wing coverts distinguishable, but duller and less conspicuous. Speaking to Mr. Atherton tonight, read this bird. He knows it well as the ground parrot and that it nests in termite mounds. He's noted this pair at the same place as seen by me today for at least a fortnight past, uh, today for a fortnight past. Has also lately seen two other, um, two, other oh, two other isolated pairs on other parts of his run. Yeah, he's also seen two other isolated, <laughs> let me start again. Has also lately seen two other isolated pairs on other parts of his run. Has promised to let me know if he finds a nest. Um, so that's just the first entry. And I'll just read a little bit of the next bit, which is not about Paris, but this is just amazing as well. Yesterday in a cave formed by overhanging sandstone formations on our new selection at Waringa, I saw what looked like specimens of Aboriginal art. A number of human hand hands and a boomerang have been outlined on the ceiling of the cave by a kind of stenciling process. Man, okay. You know, this is, it's just the history of our country. Uh, 
Um, hmm. All right, sorry. So, I, I just want to describe the photos here. Um, you can see, if I, if I just point this down, he set up a hide um, to look at the nest. These are the the photos here. This is, oh, sorry. So, you know what? I'll, I'll switch to the um, the front camera. Just hold on. Okay, so here we have the two at the nest. A um, bit hard to tell with the black and white, but I think it's fairly clear this is the male at the entrance. Just because the markings are just a bit stronger and the female sitting on top. And so I, I don't have the details, but you observe these for, I'm not sure, I think it was a week or, I, I don't know, but they abandoned the nest. So, so here's the hide that he built to look in. You can see here how low the nest hole is. Um, they abandoned the nest, so he later went in and excavated it and had a look. Um, and there were five eggs. Now these eggs uh, would have been very similar to these. This is a golden shoulder parrot egg, which I've just got in that little plastic cup. And you can see they're only a few centimetres um, in size. But, I don't know, I mean, uh, I don't know if there's ever any hope of cloning these. You know, cloning birds is quite difficult. They're probably gone. But it's just amazing to have this man's records here. And we really need to organise somehow to get it um, transcribed. But on the other side, okay, over here. So the next closest relation to the paradise parrot is golden shoulder parrots, which sadly themselves are also endangered. Um, they occur up on the top of Cape York. And I have two in an aviary here. And I'm trying to get them to breed. There are recovery plans and things in place with them, but there's no captive breeding at the moment. I'm not, I don't know if it's nest needed or not. But uh, here are these golden shouldered parrots. So that's the male on the left. If that was a paradise parrot, his aqua blue chest would be greener and the golden patch would be uh, reddish. And that kind of slate grey on the wings would be a bit browner. And you can see the female on the right, a uh, lot plainer colours, she's greener. I think probably with the Paradise Parrot, as Cyril described there, there was, you know, the, the faint resemblance of some of the male markings. There's not nearly as much here on the Golden Shoulder Parrots. But anyway, so that's it. Thanks.